Hello, guys. So my name is CZ Champion Zhao. Uh, most, call me, most people call me CZ. For this um, talk, I actually prepared some slides. Uh, it's probably one of the first times we did this. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, three things. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, why am I so bullish? I think on Twitter and on uh, some uh, magazines, even Forbes, uh, called me the most bullish person in the crypto industry. I think the other most crypt, uh, bullish people just left. Um, and uh, uh, I'll also talk a little bit about Binance, uh, what, uh, what we do and why we do it, and also uh, talk about centralization versus decentralized uh, exchanges. So first of all, um, why am I so bullish? L let me ask, how many people recognize this graph? Um, so if you look at the year, it starts from 1994. Uh, well. Th this part's before that, but this shows until right now. How many people recognize this graph? Just yell it out. Uh, what is it? Amazon. Not Amazon. NASDAQ. NASDAQ. V very good. So you only took about a couple of seconds, two tries. Very good. So, um, but if you look at the shape, th there's a couple of things I want to point out. Um, does this work? Okay, uh, the pointer doesn't really work. But above 2000, uh, you reached a uh, high at uh, in about March 2000 uh, for uh, 5,100 points, so 5,100 points. Um, by 2002, it dropped to about um, 1,100. So there's an 80% drop in, on NASDAQ over a year and a half period. Um, and then if you look at the shape of this curve, it's very, very familiar. I mean, I don't know if you guys see it, but it's very familiar to me. Uh, but let's look at another graph. So if we go back one, um, the purple line is, the new, uh, is still purple line. It's now being condensed. So, it's now, so the purple line is still the NASDAQ line. So can somebody tell me what's the blue line now, the, the line on top? It started in 2004, actually August 2004. Anyone? Somebody called a close competitor before, which was Amazon, but this is not Amazon's line. So this is, the top line is Google. So we can see that Google outperformed NASDAQ uh, by a huge margin, by 17, almost 17x. Um, let's look at a different line. Can somebody tell me what this line? The, so now those two lines are being condensed again. There's a new top blue line on top. And that's supposed to start in 2009, but the first trade actually happened in 2010. Can somebody tell me what that is? Yes, Bitcoin. So when, when you graph Bitcoin on top of these two graphs, it actually condenses the other two graphs lines until completely flat. So uh, Bitcoin actually did really well. When people say Bitcoin is a bubble or Bitcoin is a, a scam, I really don't know what they're talking about. Um, I'll show you another fourth graph. So this is a one-year graph. It starts from January all the way till December of 2000-something. Can somebody tell me what this graph is? Uh, not quite BNB. Not, 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 not yet. Not yet. So... Um, this is, a, uh, this, is a, this is a Bitcoin graph for 2011. So in 2011, uh, Bitcoin in June went up to $32. And that's an all-time high uh, by then. And it dropped to $2 somewhere around November uh, that year. But again, if you look at the graph, I think the shape looks very, very familiar. Um, so this, this is the final slide in this exercise. Uh, so now the bottom line is the Bitcoin uh, price. Uh, can somebody tell me what the top line is, the blue line? No, somebody said the answer before. The top line is BNB. So this is BNB's performance against Bitcoin. Uh, we started somewhere in July 2017 and continued till, not, till now. These slides, this, uh, slides were made a few days ago before the uh, pump, uh, before the recent rise in, in price. So, um, so this is why I'm really bullish. So if you... If you, if you, if you um, Come look at the bigger picture. If you uh, distance yourself a little bit, look at the longer horizon. I think it's very clear that we're building something that's, that's going to last, right? So it's, it, uh, uh, this industry is not going to disappear overnight. Um, and to whatever the debate was that was just here, uh, we're, we're here to stay. And we can also see that um, even in the traditional markets on NASDAQ, there are 80% drops uh, happening over a year-long period. So let me talk a little bit about, about Binance. So most people know Binance as a uh, exchange. Let, let me just show, see a show of hands. How many people use Binance? I think most people probably heard of us, but okay, there's a few hands, or quite, a, quite a number. So 
most, most of you guys probably know Binance as an exchange, but we're actually a bit more than that now. So we're, in a, we're a pretty big ecosystem now. So on the exchange side, we have the centralized Binance.com, which is a crypto-to-crypto -crypto exchange. And then we have a number of centralized fiat exchanges coming, uh, uh, running already. Um, so we have Binance Info, which is a free uh, information portal for different projects, crypto projects or coins. We have Binance Labs, which is an early stage incubation uh, fund that invests in the infrastructure projects in this industry. Binance Labs just launched an incubation program as well as a fellowship program. The fellowship program, you can be a loan developer and we'll just give you some, uh, some grant if you're working on something that we, uh, that's interesting to us. And there's really no, no strings attached. Binance Research issues uh, institutional grade research reports. Most of you guys probably have seen it recently. Um, Binance Dex, I'll talk about that a little, a little bit later. Uh, Binance Academy is a free open uh, education portal that uh, have videos and articles in more than 16 languages. And we offer them in Korean as well. So um, you, you guys can go and uh, uh, learn different aspects or different terms uh, about blockchain. Trust Wallet is a uh, wallet that we emerged with, we acquired, and uh, when we acquired it, it only supports Ethereum and tokens. Now, today, I think, I can't even count. Uh, I think it supports somewhere between 15 to 20 coins now. Uh, we have published an open API that the other coin developer, other projects can just interact directly with us. Um, Launchpad, I think most of you guys know, uh, it's been the talk recently. Uh, we, the, the, the goal of Launchpad is actually to help the projects raise money. We want to help good projects raise money. Uh, the, goal, the goal of Launchpad is not so that uh, we give a 3x pump uh, on, uh, two days later. So that, that's not the goal of Launchpad. And I think uh, that 10x, 5x uh, multiply up, uh, upon launching is going to go away uh, over time. And we want, to, we want to have a stable and we want to have a proper way for projects to raise money through blockchain. I still believe that blockchain fundraising is one of the biggest killer apps we have today for blockchain. And I'll talk a little bit about charity uh, last. So let's move on. Um, so BNB uh, is, most people know them as either a coin that you use, use to pay for fees on Binance.com, but it's actually grown much more than that. Um, and so now you can use Binance coin to pay for almost anything. You can buy plane tickets, buy coffee, uh, used it for, uh, as collaterals for loans. Uh, you can buy virtual gifts in games, uh, video streaming sites, and um, it's all here. I'm not going to iterate through all of them. But one of the key things I want to highlight is actually most of this, uh, actually all of this so far, Binance have not paid a single vendor or a partner to accept Binance coin. We never pay. So all of this are organic. So all of this, even though sometimes it's, uh, uh, we ask them or we talk to them, they talk to us, but we're so far, Binance have not sponsored any of these partnerships. Um, so this is a quick uh, history of what we did. I'll just uh, talk a little, uh, pick a few points. So we started, actually, we finished our own IC on July 2nd, 2004, uh, 2017, and 12 days later, we launched the site. Uh, from there, we launched Android, uh, Binance Labs, Launchpad, everything. So I'll fast forward through this a little bit. Um, and in April, we're going to launch this, a few question marks over there. So um, uh, that's, I'll, talk about just that, I'll talk about that just in a second. Um, so we've been pretty busy at um, uh, building all this stuff. So one of the questions I get asked very often is, hey, CZ, you're kind of rich now, and why do you still work so hard? Why are you still online 24 by 7? And why does your team work so hard to do this? So I want to talk a little bit about why we do the things we do. So I think, OK, so uh, this, this is an older slide. Um, actually, I'm going to skip this one. So I think basically our goal is to increase the freedom of money. Um, I think that's a meaningful, for, at least for me, I think that's a very meaningful thing for me to do, and that's a very impactful thing to do. Um, I think basically as human beings, as a species, as, a, as an animal, uh, what we, my understanding is we want to take care of ourselves, and then we want to take care of others. When you help others, you actually get great, great satisfaction. And as a species, if we didn't do that, then our species is probably not going to be here or not going to thrive. So I think that we're genetically programmed to help others, and you get very strong satisfaction when you do that. And the way we know how to do that to help others is to increase the freedom of money. 
Um, I think right now, most of our money is not so free. It's, it's free to some extent. If you don't buy dinner, um, uh, buy, uh, uh, spend a little bit of money here and there, that's kind of relatively free. But as soon as you want to say, you want to send a million dollars from Korea to invest in a project in China, it's pretty difficult to do that, actually, just from the logistics uh, of it. So what we want to do is basically, I think by increasing freedom, uh, freedom of money, we can actually make people's lives a lot better. And we will have a much stronger financial system that can support all kind of more advanced developments, like figuring out why do we exist, why do we have a soul, um, go to Mars, and, for, and beyond. So, when we talk about the increasing the freedom, uh, there's a couple of things I want to uh, stress. Uh, we can't just look at increasing freedom alone. It has to be, we assume that the other, the other attributes don't change, in, especially security and ease of use. If we, can, if we can hold those things constant, or even improve them potentially, then, and then at the same time increase the freedom, freedom that's really good. If we just increase the freedom but causes a lot of problems in terms of security and other things, ease of use, for example, then that's not, sometimes it doesn't really, it, it, it doesn't, it's not really worth it. So, let, so with that, I'm going to jump into the main topic, which is a centralization versus decentralization. So we actually offer both. Um, so we have a centralized exchange, and we have a decentralized exchange that's coming up, or the Binance chain. So um, let me talk about both of them a little bit. Um, so, uh, so basically, the first thing I want to talk about is the security. So one of the biggest things, one of the biggest worries or complaints or uh, concerns people have on centralized exchanges or the discussion is uh, the centralized exchanges hold your funds. So uh, Binance.com, if you want to trade on that, you've got to uh, deposit your Bitcoins in or whatever coin you're, you're holding. And we, took man we, took custody, we take custody of that. Um, on your own, uh, on a decentralized exchange, you, everything's in your own wallet. You have full control. So uh, I think as Andreas just said earlier today, um, this is just a different, uh, the, the different risk is somebody else losing for you or you losing it yourself. Um, it's actually not so clear. I think this is probably maybe an unpopular opinion in this crowd. It's actually not clear to me which one's safer, which one's more secure. So many people say, okay, decentralized is more secure. Eh, I'm not too sure about that, to be honest. So on the centralized exchange, we have, we have to do many things such as um, KYC and AML, that's basically required uh, by, by the regulators. Um, we actually have to spend a lot of effort developing a very large uh, big data risk management system. So uh, the exchange has gone beyond the sort of password, uh, username, and then 2FA. Uh, that's not enough. So um, on the centralized exchange today, on Binance.com, uh, so Binance is probably the only exchange in the world today that can prevent you, that can even protect your funds even from a SIM swap. So if your SIM gets swapped, most likely your email will, will get hacked and your 2FA will get compromised. And, even, and you can potentially at the same time have a virus running on your, on your PC. Even in those cases, sometimes we can protect your funds. Um, so uh, for a centralized exchange, we actually do a lot on security. Um, to, to, use your, um, to use your wallet on decentralized exchange, um, well, basically, you have full control of your private keys, but then you've got to protect yourself against others, hackers, and you've got to protect against yourself. So against hackers, that means that you should never connect your computer to the internet. Uh, as, long, as soon as you connect it online, there's a chance that you will get compromised. Um, and uh, you should never download any file that includes somebody sending, sending you a GIF uh, through a Telegram or whatever chat, uh, chat um, uh, program you use, because it might, be, it might contain a virus. And antivirus software is not 100% bulletproof. So, and on top of that, you've got to secure against yourself, right? Your computer, you may lose your computer, you may damage your computer, you may, I don't know, drop it. Um, and uh, so you've got, to ha you've got to have a secure backup. So you've got to back it up in multiple places or you store it in a vault, et cetera. And you've got to make sure that nobody can access that, uh, that backup. So you've got to encrypt it properly. And most people don't know how to encrypt it properly, like the general population. The, the crowd here probably do, but most of the general population actually doesn't really know how to do that. Um, and then there's the third case where you, you yourself may become a, unavailable at certain times. So you, you may want your spouse or next of kin to be able to access it in some delayed fashion. Um, there's, a, there's a very easy way to do that, which is called the dead man switch. So all of these problems are solvable, and that's already solved today. It's just the, the, the ease of use of the level of difficulty is relatively high today. So 
um, which one's safer, I'm not too sure. I think today for the average person on the street, there's more people who are much safer with Binance.com, a centralized exchange. So, um, but it's really depend on, it really depends on, uh, uh, on how technical you are or how, 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 uh, how proficient you are with security yourself. So the next thing is really ease of use. So comparing the centralized and decentralized versions of exchanges specifically, uh, I think today most people would agree that the centralized exchanges are easier to use. Um, we have made Binance DEX relatively easy. Um, so I think how many people have tried the Binance DEX the uh, uh, on our testnet? Let me see a short raise of hands. Okay, a few, a few, okay. Um, so uh, today on the centralized exchanges, there's definitely high liquidity. So I think all the liquidity is right now on the, ce on the centralized exchanges. Um, on the decentralized exchanges, I think the Binance chain has a chance to get some liquidity. So I will, I'll put that down on, on, the, on the to be determined part. Um, for Binance.com right now, it's very hard to get listed. Um, we have very high listing requirements, and we are very careful with listing projects now. Um, this is because Binance.com is a relatively big exchange now, and any coin we list on there is going to have a we're going to have an impact, and we don't want to use that impact um, uh, uh, in, in the wrong way. On the decentralized exchange, the vote uh, the listing is really done by the community nodes uh, voting. So you can you can, you, can, you can pay a small fee and then submit your submit your uh, uh, listing request, and the, the validator nodes will vote. Um, on the server side, on the centralized exchange, you get a 24 by 7 help desk, and we are actually trying to expand our help desk to be officially supporting the Korean language this year. So that will come out sometime this year. Um, on the, on the decentralized ex exchange side, then you have what, all you get is a community support forum, so basically a, um, uh, online. Um, so today, on the centralized exchange side, we have Binance.com, uh, which is the crypto to crypto exchange. We have Binance Jersey, um, which supports British pounds and euro trading. Uh, we have Binance, uh, Binance Uganda, uh, which actually supports a, a currency called the Uganda shilling. Um, I really like that word because uh, we do that all the time uh, in our industry, uh, right? Always be shilling. Uh, yeah. So uh, on the decentralized side, we have the testnet today. So, but all of this is about to change. Uh, actually, on the testnet, I think if the guys who have tried it, I want to address some of the concerns raised earlier by the panel, uh, just the panel before. Uh, the Binance DEX can, uh, that, uh, is based on, uh, is using the similar uh, consensus protocol to Cosmos. And uh, it's, uh, we, have, we have set with uh, one second blocks, and one block confirmation is final. So as soon as you get a confirmation, that's it, it's done. Uh, there's, there's no possibility of rollback. And if you try it on the DEX, uh, the confirmations are very quick. It's basically sub-second right now on, on the DEX, uh, on the testnet. Uh, on the production side, on the, on the production, on the mainnet, when we launch, uh, you may, we target to be a, about a second a block. So it's actually much quicker than Visa and all these other uh, traditional um, uh, payment methods. So, and you can handle very high capacity. So you can handle a th thousands, of, thousands of transactions per second. So let me come to the second most important slide, which is the next slide. Um, so coming April now, we have both offerings. We are adding to our product line. So we are announcing that Binance Singapore, unfortunately, it's not Korea. I, I really wished for it to be Korea. But Binance Singapore will, will become, a, become online uh, sometimes in April. Um, I actually don't know exact, the exact date, but we'll figure that out. So you'll be a fiat to crypto exchange uh, uh, servicing uh, mostly uh, Singapore dollar. Um, and also the Binance DEX, the anticipated mainnet launch, will happen this month. Um, so uh, that will happen as well. And uh, so um, before I finish, uh, I want to bring you to the last topic, which is a Binance, the, uh, the Binance uh, Charity Foundation. So the Binance Charity Foundation is a 100% transparent charity initiative that all the transactions are tr done on the blockchain. And we provide a website portal that helps, that helps you track uh, or visualize the transactions. But the actual transactions are all done on the blockchain. So the website is just really an easy way for you to view it, kind of like an explorer, a, a, easier, a easier to use one. We started in February uh, this year uh, with a pilot in one school uh, in Africa, in Uganda. And uh, in the last three months, we've, we've expanded to, uh, at, well, in the, in the next couple of months, we're going to expand that to 10 schools. We're doing five schools this month. And uh, hopefully in the next 12 months or so, we're going to expand it to about 100 schools. 
so far, we have uh, helped more than 5,000 kids in the last three months. And we have raised about 4.8 million US dollars equivalent in crypto uh, from 10, 10 plus industry players. Uh, not all 10 industry players have com fully confirmed, um, but I'll name a few just uh, on top of my head. Uh, Tron did, did make a $3 million donation, so it's a big chunk of that. Um, and uh, IOST, Mithril, Ripple, uh, a, a few others um, So I uh, have confirmed. Um, this is an older version of a slide. I have, actually have a better one, but uh, anyway. So it used to be that one BNB can support a kid in Africa, uh, or a kid's lunch in Africa for about 20 days, for a month. And given the rise in the BNB price now, today, one BNB can support one kid's lunch for 63 days. And that actually corresponds to one semester. So for one BNB, you can, you can sponsor a kid well, so the, the lunch is significant in the sense that if, if the kid doesn't, cannot eat lunch at school, then they usually don't go to school. When they can eat lunch at school, they go to school. So this is not just about the lunch. This is about providing education for them. This is the difference between them being educated or not. So for Binance Charity Foundation, we stress very heavily on education. And it's not just uh, the education of the kid. Now the kid will learn about cryptocurrency. They will learn that cryptocurrency are, can be used in a good way. So, for one BNB, you can actually put a kid through one semester of school in Africa. So um, I do urge you, uh, if you can, to visit uh, Binance.Charity, uh, the website URL there, and um, donate if you can. So I think that's all my talk today. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think we, we're, we're not allowing Q&A, right? So if you guys want to find me later, I'll be in the hallway somewhere uh, and around the, around the uh, conference. So thank you very much. Yeah.